Hi everybody, this is Mrs Sykes and this is a basic overview of leaf structure. Now this picture here is obviously not leaf shaped. What we're talking about is a leaf on its very edge, zoomed in. So not the bit that looks like a leaf. But actually, if we got that and we looked at the teeny tiny little edge of it, this is the picture that we would see. You should notice quite quickly that there are all of these cells here which are covered in green. The reason that these ones are in green is because they have loads and loads of chloroplasts. Because at the end of the day, a leaf is all about maximising photosynthesis. And nearly everything that we are going to cover and talk about is going to link back to this idea of photosynthesis. So, let's start at the top of the leaf. So the top of the leaf is up here. So in normal species of plant, unless it's something like a grass plant, there is a top of the leaf and a bottom of the leaf. So one side of the leaf will get more sun than the other. So you'd have sun rays generally coming in these kind of directions. And this is why the leaf is adapted to do as much as it possibly can do on this surface here. Lower down, you will still find green bits and you will still find chloroplasts, but this is where the core business of the leaf takes place. Right, at the top here, we have something called the epidermis. The epidermis, or epidermal tissue, so this is the epidermis, and there's actually one at the bottom as well. And they are very interestingly and very uniquely called upper and lower. So you've got two epidermal layers, the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. And again, depending on the type of plant, they will depend on their differences. As a general rule, the upper epidermis doesn't have any stomata. And a stomata is a little hole which allows gases to come in and out. The lower epidermis does, every now and again, have little holes in it. And these little holes, if you looked at them the other way round, would look a little bit like a donut. So the idea is, is that the gases go in and out of this mouth shape. And in this orientation, what you're seeing is basically a bagel shape that's been cut in half. So if you take a bagel and you cut it in half, you get one little circle and one little circle, and then you get the rest of the loop. So this is going to be a stomata. So individual is called a stoma, and if there's more than one, it's stomata. And these cells on the outside are the guard cells because they guard the stoma. So this is a guard cell and this is a guard cell too. And they allow the stoma to open and shut. So sometimes these guard cells fill up all of this area here and therefore filling all of that area would close the stoma, or the stomata for more than one. And when they're in their normal position where it looks like a ring donut, gases can go in and out. So, light comes from above. Top layer is the upper epidermis, bottom layer is the lower epidermis, and it's got stoma or stomata holes in it, and they've got these little guard cells, which are little teeny tiny circle pairs either side. The upper epidermis has a layer here, which is waterproof and see-through. And the idea is, is that because it's see-through, all of the light can travel through it. Nearly all of the light can travel through these epidermis cells as well. So that hardly any of the light has been stopped at any point. The light then continues and goes into these cells at the bottom. These cells are the palisade mesophyll cells. If you were asked to draw a plant cell, the type of cell that you would draw would be one of these. So a bog standard plant cell 
is a palisade mesophyll cell. And a palisade mesophyll cell is jam-packed full of chloroplasts, which is why they've got loads and loads of these green little bits in them. They are stacked upright like books on a shelf. And because they're stacked like books on a shelf rather than bricks, this cell here can get lots of light. And this cell here can get lots of light. And this cell here can get lots of light because it channels down the cell. If they were like bricks and in layers this way, this cell at the top would get loads of light, this one would, this one wouldn't get very much at all, and if there was a layer below that, it would get even less. So by being stacked this way, like books on a shelf, it allows the plant to get loads of light to every single one of these cells to maximise the amount of photosynthesis that can take place. Now for photosynthesis we need a few things, we need light. Check, we've sorted that out, we have a see-through layer and they're stacked that way. But we also need water. Now the water comes through here. We have these vessels here which are our xylem vessels and the xylem vessels transport water. So the xylem vessels will transport water around the plant. We've also got here, these ones are our phloem cells. And the phloem cells, which are easier to spot because the walls are less thick, the phloem cells collect up all the glucose that has been made and take that from the leaves everywhere else. So the xylem is delivering water for photosynthesis. The phloem is taking the glucose away so that it can go to the flowers, so that it can go to any fruit, so that it can go to the roots. So water comes in, phloem goes away. And this entire section is sometimes called a vascular bundle. So it's made of the different pipes in the leaf. So we have upper epidermis, see-through growth leaf layer, palisade mesophyll, masses of photosynthesis taking place there. Xylem delivers water, which then needs to move to our palisade cells to allow photosynthesis to take place. When glucose has been made, that glucose is then delivered to the globe to the glucose containing phloem cells and is taken back around the plant. The other thing that we will require for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide gas comes through the stoma or multiple stomata. So what we need in this case is we need carbon dioxide to be able to diffuse into the plant. And it uses these air spaces for the carbon dioxide to go in and it will weave its way where it needs to go up to the cells that are photosynthesizing. When these cells release carbon dioxide and we're using this carbon dioxide and when they release oxygen as a waste product that oxygen then goes back this way and back out again. So carbon dioxide goes into the plant and, in general, oxygen will leave. This area here, where we've got the odd cell, which is basically spacing the gap between the lower and the palisade, this is called the spongy mesophyll. And just like a sponge that you would think of, of soaking up water, the spongy mesophyll is there to soak up any light that hasn't been used. So the light comes through and oh, this little bit goes there. It didn't get captured by any chloroplasts elsewhere. So here, this light will be used for photosynthesis. So upper epidermis lets the light through. Palisade mesophyll does most of the photosynthesis. Xylem delivers water, flow and transports glucose. Spongy mesophyll spaces everything out and allows the air to go in both directions, but most importantly, soaks up any light that's made it that far into the leaf. The lower epidermis contains stomata, which are multiple holes, 
which are looked after by guard cells. Guard cells can open or close, and that allows the plant to control how much uh, carbon dioxide can go in and whether any water is being lost as well by the process of transpiration. And that's everything. In a nutshell, layers, photosynthesis, water and glucose delivery, spare photosynthesis taking place, and roots for the gases to move, entranceway for the gases, protection for the plant.